started tumbling dice. So we're like, tumbling. Hi everybody, welcome to Freddy's. Hope you're all enjoying your meal. We're going to start off the Freddy's Open Mic with some poetry and storytelling. We're going to go to music at 6 p.m. and rock and roll all night long. So, here we go. I know how that goes.
Don't be children for Christmas. Thanks.
and I sang this Christmas song that um, people who don't hey, like Christmas songs you like. How you been? Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. From now on, our troubles will be out of sight. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Make the Yuletide day. From now on, our troubles will be miles away. Once more, as in olden days, happy golden days of yore. Faithful friends who are dear to us, gather near to us once more. New Year's Eve, we all may be together, if the fates allow. So hang a shining star upon the highest bough, and have yourself a merry Little Christmas now. All right, round of applause for Louise, everyone. Thank you. Lovely, lovely. Now we have Tom the World. Oh, look at your necklace. Looking as festive as ever with. Like the okay. uh, cheddar cheese? With Swiss. Well, the whole thing started by morning. And do you want a uh, bottom of a wheat monitor? Do you want well, 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 fries or anything with it? Well, I looked up at the sky and the sky looked back at me. We met somewhere in the middle where we hoped we could agree. I get this telephone call and see. Now he had run before and I had not bought his plan. But he said I shall bring you back, oh Mr. Poetry Man. And so I waited. Did. And this is what he said to me. This happened at 9.25 a.m. this morning and may explain my lateness and my non brevity He said, Tom, have I got a deal for you? I've got promotional pens and they can have a little inscription on them. Stolen from World Poet again. And I said, that's a beautiful idea. How much will it cost me to buy your idea? He said, I've got a deal for you, Tom. I know you can't afford $200. I'll make it 194 And I said, do you realize, my friend, we are poets. Look underneath your feet and you'll see that's where we live. We are small creatures. We have no money. Everything we do, we have to give. He said, this will bring customers back. I said, don't talk customers. They're human beings. They're not just people to buy and sell things. They're part of the great process of being. He didn't know what to say at that point in time. But remember we had a relationship established from three months ago where he tried to sell me some, some other part of that. And I liked the conversation because I said to him, do you realize how good a salesperson you are? And he thought I was bargaining the price down. And I said, no, no, no. I said, you have a wonderful gift. He said, but what, what he did, he started with it. So I'll give you one bad joke, and then a deal, and then I'll go. And this was his bad joke. What's the difference between in-laws and outlaws? In-laws are not wanted. Ah, it's bad, isn't it? Well, I had to put up with it this morning. And I said to him, you've got a great gift of communication. And I know that you're trying to sell me something. But you've got to understand, we are poets. We beg and we give. We don't do that buying and selling thing very well. He said, well, how do you survive? I said, on the whim of kindness, on the wing of goodwill, on the tiny little safety net that goes between all human beings that says we're part of each other, the very air we breathe. Now, I knew I might have lost him at that point. Getting metaphysical with a salesperson is not, <laughs> is not necessarily the most existential philosophy you can adopt. But it truly happened that I kept him on the line for 45 minutes this <laughs> morning. At the end of that time, he was assured of my poverty, my poetry, and my inability to buy what he was trying to sell me. Now, it may have been promotional pins, and they may have had a beautiful little thing saying, stolen from. But all I got from that man this morning was a story I shared with you this afternoon. 
Now this world has made riches, and we are all rich in this. Every person in this room has a story, and we are here. It's a season to give. This is a true story. <laughs> You've heard about this morning. <laughs> the sales went for 45 minutes of my life, but which you got for five minutes. A much better deal, by the way. But uh, last night, this is a true story. I know you won't believe it, but last night was very, very cold. It was so cold that at Taco Maria's, they cancelled hippie, hip, what do they call Hippie something, hippie church. They have hippie church every Sunday. And all the hippies didn't come out because it's too cold for hippies. Now that's that's serious in Austin. I mean, if the hippies don't come out, you know, the whole world's going to come apart. Because without the hippies of Austin, apparently nothing's going to work in the world. It's the, it's the great mojo that keeps things going. You think I'm joking. You're in South Austin. You're used to it. But some people, are, and I do not like, some people in the north of Austin have never seen a hippie. Uh, it's true. It's, uh, it's true. And if you go further to Waco, oh, don't go to Waco. <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then we get tempted to go beyond Austin City Limits and we go up to the poets up in Belton and Temple. And we see them quivering inside the library. Be because you have three directions, right, extreme right, ultra right, and then far out right. And they need two wings to fly with, but they've only got one. This one. So, you know, we don't stay long. We visit, do poetry, and get out of it. But I digress. Last night we were at Taco Maria's, Maria's Taco Express. I'm always corrected, but I don't do reality very well. Fantasy, fantastic. You know? I think if Walt Disney had had four places like Tomorrowland, Adventureland, Wild West, and Fantasyland, I just want Fantasyland. Now, I went down to Epcot to see Michael Jackson's Captain EO, eight minutes. But I was in the wrong country. I drove on that left-hand side of the road for 200 miles. That was another story. So anyway, that's <laughs> <laughs> a true story. Hire the car, get in the car. I'm going to Captain EO. I'm going to Disney World. I'm going to live in Fantasyland. And why are these cars all bonking at me? Why are they bonking, bonking, bonking? These Americans, they are rude, rude people. Why do they do that bonk? And I realized one of us was wrong, it was probably me. But I digress. Last night we were at Maria's Taco Express. Now, I don't know if you ever frozen for poetry, but we froze for poetry. We were chattering and chilling. We were cool, man. We were the coolest poets in the whole town. I mean, some of us were pink, some of us were blue, some of us were purple. But we were colorful people. And inside, inside the warmth of Maria's Taco Express, there was this group of normal people. Now, you know, I don't know if you meet, well, you know, job, clothes, wife, marriage, divorce, the full catastrophe. But they were normal, about 10 of them in a coven, normal people, right? And we weren't used to this, and they weren't used to us. They were looking through the mirror, looking through the window. And they see us shivering and smiling and laughing hysterically in the cold and the chill. <laughs> anyway, right near the end, because we went for three hours, that was just the first haiku. Three hours, a little guy comes up and he says, Do you mind if we take a group photograph? I said, Bring out your dead. Bring them out. <laughs> and so we went back inside and brought out all these normal people. There were about 10 of them. And we stood on stage, we shivered together, and they didn't know what else to do, so we gave them more poetry. And now they're going to have to explain that photograph from last night. When they go back to the suburbs, who are these strange people in this photograph, and why are they laughing so hysterically? 
example, you can't say because they're chill, because they're cool. You have to say, look, they're poets, they're fools. <laughs> Within your poet persona that has weathered a floor aging so majestic within a vintage bouquet, where writers wrinkle thoughts that are set up with poetic perfection, sensing sensual solitude in rhyming wrapped packages, sharing a time warp pre peaceful presence. Poetry's wildflower blossom, so pure inside tranquil heart, where insight the quill harmony. Heartbeats are set of flutter, living imagery that alliterates a life of bright melody, trancing in reflective reflections of lyrical composition that composes a poet so to be that inspired free spirit poet that will take path less taken, who will challenge the status quo with an inherited independence creed that will never surrender a poet's free will, but demonstrates the true great precision of PowerPoint penetration pronunciation in the poetic mastery of vocal vocabulary that makes vintage wine that savors poetry. The greatest gift a poet has is to create seedling from within the mind that transplant into readers where it germinates to sprout creative roots within another generation that will age with poetic pruning where, the, where they create another finished bouquet. Thank you. Christmas Eve paraphernalia in Christendom 
Jewry or Islam. It was a tour much fresher than the Trail of Lights. Lost on the dreary carloads of gawkers just driving through, you had to get out and walk to appreciate the, the pure creativity and artistry shed on each house on that brilliant block metastasized to the connected Cedar Street. Front yards were festooned with choicest kitsch. From porch to tree to driveway, a motorcycle might be bound in luminance, a Halloween skeleton might wear a Santa cap, a toilet seat might serve as a decorous wreath, a cross street necklace might shine from telephone pole to pole. A house in the middle of the north side was where the tradition got its start. You could tour the property fore to aft, circling the merry dwelling. Not a religious or commercial icon you would find on the left wall. The display is set off by black tarp siding, but there would be cactus Christmas bulbs and those of cowboy boots and pill bottles blowing from the hood. The electricity meter spun like a compact disc while a plastic pail begged, please donate for utilities. The couple in the house were the 37th Street, where the 37th Street lights began, moved away, and the tradition began to slowly climb. I visited there the other day. The clever pagan fringe element was gone. One solitary suburban frontage showed the usual Santa and reindeer set from just anywhere in USA. And there was no ironic angel on 37th Street. Thank you. Okay. 
gracious people. This is a proclamation from the city of Austin. This proclamation which we, <laughs> it's small print, but you have to trust me on What it says is, we hereby declare next Friday the 13th to be the Osmic Peace Wave Day. Osmic. I know you say this is weird Austin. It is no longer weird Austin. It is a combination of awesome and cosmic because you, sir, are awesome and cosmic. And everyone in this room is both awesome and cosmic. So we have Osmic Day. And being poets, I have invitations for all of us to come to Peace Park. P-E-A-S-E, -E, because we can't spell it. Dyslexia, can't spell it. IT, I can spell IT. Information technology, but I digress. This is the invitation. It starts at 11 a.m. Young Scott will be there. Uh, Benjamin Franklin will be there, Louise Gale Richardson will be there, and I will be there in costume, only I'll dress in pink on Friday, for Friday the 13th. It only seems fair, the religious holiday after all. So this proclamation says, Friday the 13th is here by declare the Osmic Code, the day of the Peace Wave. Peace Wave. What's a Peace Wave? Well, this is one. That's it. That's one. Peace Wave. Hi. Very good. My kids. Peace. Peace. Very much. And uh, not this. Not this. No. More of this. Because we've had a lot of this. We've had a lot of this. We're going to gather and do poetry and music all day long. Because we're silly people. And we like being together. We really like. I mean, we wish we were together. But, I mean, I mean, not long contingent. I mean, but we're aurically close. You know, if you, if you were to brush our auras, and our chakras together, you find we're all parallel in the dolphin wave towards the next dimension. If that makes sense to you, you're definitely in Austin. <laughs> and we would like to keep oh, parallel dimensions, yes please. Ah, oh, that's wonderful. But I digress. I want to read, I won't read it to you, because I will, I'll read it to you, because it's a beautiful thing. The Austin City Council hereby proclaims, whereas Osmic is a new description for Austin, awesome and cosmic, proclaimed at last year's first Osmic City event, and whereas, to continue the celebration, events are scheduled to bring our community together in a fun, artistic and educational way, demonstrating how ours is a model city and cosmic hub for creating a better way of living. Isn't that true, Ben? Yes. Better, as in butter, not much here. And whereas local artisans of all ages, students, those with disabilities and the underprivileged will be exhibiting their art, music and poetry, which display efforts of peace building for the planet and... Hold on, we're coming up to the crisis now. I mean, the big... Old, here we go. Whereas events kick off with a public performance of Osmic poetry, music and art with a theme, Peace Wave, and an exhibition of peace artworks by students bringing to life one of the Osmic City slogans, which are, you can be here and you can be there at the same time. You can. And I, Lee Eppingwell, Mayor of the City of Austin, do hereby proclaim December 13, 2013 as Osmic Peace Wave of Austin. You may all now take a piece. Beautiful, thank you. <laughs> so here's the invitation if you'd like to come, and here's the proclamation if you'd like it to take home, and you can burn it and keep yourself warm in winter. It's a really good thing. Long live us. All right, thank you, Tom. You noticed.
will say you are the star the world has been waiting for. It. Let it shine. Merry Christmas, folks. I was a kid again, to dance in the gentle rain, splashing my thoughts up with wind, flying kites with blue, into blue skies with tails as tall as tilt and gold, riding bicycles down dark trails, bright with imagination to wander with, slaying the monsters within your dream, within, with magical swords of wood. I wish I were a kid again, to camp with the trees, around the fire, that spirits would seek in the story that would make my hide creep to swim in the oceans in the pond that the Loch Ness monster was in to grab the tail and throw my way like a water slide. I wish I were a kid again that my mother would hug my blanket into my dreams of fairy tales where the tooth fairy would give me the candy that smiles came from and in the tender kiss on a cheek, my world was protected for that night. I wish I were a kid again to play a ball game with my dad that would send the ball clear around the world in some to catch my father's love like a leather glove. And in all the pride that comes from the old man becoming young again. Yes, I wish I were a kid again. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for the kid and me lives slaying his monsters and still feeling tucked in playing the box game called Life. Thank you. I'm going to try something here. It's not finished, but... Christmas holiday greeting. The snow is falling while smiles are rising. And the family comes from near and afar to get together for Christmas time, holiday reunion. Handshakes and holiday hugs bring back childhood memories. A drift Christmas carol song with holiday cookies and treats that share his Christmas greetings. The wreath is hanging, the tree is sparkling, spreading wet tidings in thing in feeling better all over being uh, together handshakes and ha all they hope bring back childhood memories a drift Christmas carols and songs arranged holiday amongst holiday cookies and treats that share Christmas greetings he's a work well worked on but Over the years, 
Um, and this is when they're first hired at the Colloquy Coffee House in Greenwich Village. And um, the owner's already telling them what kind of songs they should sing. Ah. You know, stay away from politics, he says. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and Marcy turns to Joanne and she says, well, at least we're appreciated here. They didn't appreciate us back home, but they'll appreciate us here. For next time, you got it. That sounds good. St. Marcus, Texas, you were wrong. Houston, Texas, you were wrong. All of my life you've been holding me down, pulling me back, pulling me back. Now here I stand with my feet on the ground, on the right track, on the right track. Home, home. Home, hometown folks can kill you with kindness. Running your life, running your life. Homespun advice is tedious and mindless. You must be your wife, you must be your wife. Home, home, home. Hometown man doesn't want competition. My wife won't work, my wife won't work. He wants to keep your place in the kitchen. God, what a jerk, oh God, what a jerk. Home, home, home. Homegrown mom is constantly cooking, never a break, never a break. Says, why aren't you married and why aren't you looking? Mom, for Christ's sake, mom, for Christ's sake. Home, home, home. Homestyle dad is fishing and hunting, always away, always away. Power for whites, he's always grunting. He's yesterday, he's yesterday. Home, home. Home, San Marcos, Texas, you were wrong. Houston, Texas, you were wrong. We're not going home. Thank you. Yeah. And then a little bit later on, they they are a little bit more popular, and uh, they start writing their own songs. And Johanna is out front uh, singing this nice little song about growing up. And my friend Darcy is to the side, uh, questioning, you know, the whole thing. And it goes like this. This is actually the two songs in one. Sugar and Spice, Neat and Tiny. Sugar and Spice, Snips and Snails, Everything Nice, Puppy Dog Tails, Ring round the Rose, and Man in the Moon, Dance me a jig and whistle a tune. Dad pick me up, Mom brush my hair, Tell me a story, it's scary out there. One drink of water, one more piece of pie. Tuck me in bed and sing lullaby. <laughs> Whose life is like that? Not hers, not mine. Father never drinks and mother always cares. The children rarely fight, you know. Everything is bliss and life is always fair on the American TV show. Neat and tidy and tied up with a bow. Whose life was ever like that? If you find such a family, please let me know. Father, mother, sister, brother, goldfish, dog, and cat. Punish my brother, doctor my knee, tie my shoelaces, play catch with me. Fix my poor dolly, help fly my kite. Give me a hug and kiss me goodnight. Help me with homework, drive me to school. Let's go to the movies, let's go to the pool. Lend me the car, be kind to my date. I'm off to the prom, I may be home late. Sister's still a virgin, brother makes all A's. Dad would never hurt his child. Mom would never dream of having an affair. Never coarse, never vile or wild. You won't hear mother scream, you won't see sister cry. Father wouldn't strike you and mother. There won't be stolen goods in your brother's room. And the police won't arrest your brother. It's time I start thinking about a career. I'll be a freshman in college this year. Daddy, I love him with all of my might. Kids kiss grandma and grandpa goodnight. Sugar and spice, snips and snails. Everything nice, puppy dog tails. Bring round the rosy man in the moon. Dance me a jig and whistle a tune. Father won't get stinking drunk. He won't punch mother's eye. Mom wouldn't ever stray. Dad would never bruise his daughter. And I wouldn't run away. Neat and tidy and tied up with a bow. Whose life was ever like that? If you find such a family, please let me know. Father, mother, sister, brother, goldfish, dog, and cat. And then they both come together for the last one. Sugar and spice, 
snips and snails, everything nice, puppy dog tails, ring round the rosy man in the moon. Dance me a jig and whistle a tune. Thank you. Woo! if you will, that we are here, and in this British place, we're part of the future, beautiful future. This is the Peace Wave, anthemic poem, we'll all sing along, all the hobbits, don't go and see it by the way, they cut out my favourite character out of Lord of the Rings, no Tom Bombadil, they took my Tom Bombadil, they took him out of Lord of the Rings, what sort of a film is that? Tom Bobbidi was the happiest sort of guy. They put all these miserable black riders in. Oh, bring it down. So no, no, no. Boycott the Hobbit. But I, I digress. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Man, you see, I've often thought my role in life is a distraction. You know, most people say, focus. And I say, why? And, um, but this is about the peace wave. Imagine, if you will, that we're all peaceful. Okay, hold that thought. <laughs> Hold as many thoughts as you can fit in that mouth. I'll just slip one in there and one in the back of the matrix. There we go. This has to do, of course, with the ocean, which is full of plastic. Did you know there's two plastic oceans now? There's one in the Pacific and one in the Atlantic. And because the birds land there, they think it's food. It's colourful and bright and they eat the plastic and they die. And they open up little birds' bellies and it's full of plastic inside. But I digress. <laughs> this, is, this is all about the wave of peace that is coming upon us when we've been through that long call. I've learned a secret, and the secret is have no secrets. That's my secret. And now you know the secret, so you can tell everyone you know, have no secrets, and you'll never be a surprise to anyone, because they won't know what you're going to do next. But I digress. I was, I was in the ocean once, but my friends know this story because I told it last night and I know they remember everything we say in poetry so I don't dare repeat, my, repeat myself I don't because if I do they'll say you said that one last night so I won't mention the story about going down the ocean and walking into the waters and being at peace amongst the waters of Sandringham Beach and being there in the waters and letting the whole world go away no longer worried about anything because I was surrounded by water and the mother I came from, I came from the ocean I had a little squiggly tail. I was a little spermatozoa. There I am, going up the great ocean. But I digress. This is... <laughs> you ever tried counting waves? You know, a lot of people count sheep when they sleep, right? But I, I've never seen a sheep in my sleep. I never. I'm not that sort of guy. Yeah. That's from New Zealand people. You know, New Zealand people count sheep because there's more sheep than there are people. And that's disgusting. You know, you go to a party in New Zealand, they say, bring your own sheep. But don't touch my sheep, that's not your sheep. But, okay, I digress. <laughs> do not think about sheep. What do we do? This is about sheep. It's a New Zealand joke. We make jokes about New Zealanders. They used to have Polish jokes, but they're not Polish anymore. So, peace wave. Hey, wow. Let's see it. The best thing about poetry is become, you become invisible. You know, as soon as you start talking, you click the cough. And then they wait till you finish, and then they do the pause. So that's why you can distract people from what you're about to say, because you, you forget. By the time you start the poem, say the end of it. Say I started with once upon a time, okay? Now you've all heard that story, haven't you? And you know the ending. They all live happily ever after. So why should I read it? So, I don't know, let's read Peace Wave. Before us, a 
And after us, these waves will dance the sun and sand and moonlight. They slap the face of beach into connected consciousness. Tell me, where would one element be without each other? Moon's attractive orbit summons stars on water's surface to reflect heavens which we do. Philosophers counting waves as they come in, then leave drain. Eons have played the same, while we war on land and sea and air. Peace was here, peace was here, amongst us this afternoon, attuned and musical. Each pulse in vain, every heartbeat refrain, affirming the circulating desire to be within and among, core of all, in meditative silences, yet still in your bloodstream consciousness. Dance when and while you can, orchestras of oceans call your name, instruments are at hand, wind waves, stars, seas, pulse, blood, rhythm, beat, all know each other's secret desires, to be at peace, to be part of of this peace way. I've seen it in the face of 
people down on the quadrant on the QT. As they play their hacky sack. Listen to their walkers. I've seen it in the face of a guy in his car as he ashed a cigarette out the window. I've seen it as a mom reprimands her son in the aisle of AGV. Something that everybody wants to make things. when you used to dance in high school and all you thought about was getting higher and higher let that be your fantasy tonight as you just fall asleep there are really only three kinds of being sleep Wake, dream. So dream big. Next time Basho points at the moon, look to the stars. Write it down. Even though it doesn't matter. You know, it's just a scrap of paper. Send it out. Let it be real. which had nothing to do with the economy, it was just bad luck. And then my stepmother passed, my dog and cat, I think, died of a broken heart when she oh. left, and then my computer died. Wow. It was all in this one month, and the economy went to hell. And I had been going to the bowling alley and singing karaoke, and it was a lot of fun. I couldn't play music, and so they played the music for me, and I would just sing it. Well, they closed down the bowling alley. Oh, what? So I had nowhere to go. Oh. So luckily, right then, my godmother taught me how to play music. Yes. And the first thing she taught me how to play three songs, so I was on my way, and so I had this new outlet and yes. this way to take all this negative stuff away by just playing music yes. and singing songs and letting it out. And so I... My first song that I wrote was, uh, it's called This Damn Town, okay? <laughs> and it's because, not because the town is bad, the people there are really wonderful, it's just everything kind of went to hell all at the same time, you know? And uh, so what my friends and I would do is there's usually one guitar, someone had a guitar, I had a guitar, somebody else, and we pass it around in a circle between us sitting at the river or up in the bushes or down at the lake or wherever we were at and play. And so when the guitar came to me, this is the one I would play. This, I wrote it, and this is the only one that I knew. And uh, so, anyways, it goes. Went for some fun downtown. Do, 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 do. Put the bank, shut that boring alley down. Do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, now I'm nervous, you guys. Okay. I'll get my ukulele. They don't know how to play it. Oh. <laughs> Hold on. You, you, ukulele. You got it. Go ahead. I think I think better with the singing hands. Ah yes. 
But so, when it comes to the chorus, this is how it would incorporate everyone. Anyone that had a shaker or something to bang could vocalize or scat along or whatever they have during the uh, little instrumental breaks. Everyone can do that if you want to. And it's fun. And so, yeah, so it takes this, what would be a sad song, and makes it really fun. So the whole world's going to hell, and we are just going to party and have a great time anyway. Fairest one of all, if fairy godmother 
the year 2000, but OE. Or we could keep the historian's common era, CE. Christians could still reckon by Anno Domini, as the Jews could go on numbering their years as always, and the Chinese could keep going through their zodiac. But the common system would count from NE1. BC and AD were miscalculated by church fathers whole centuries after the life of Jesus the Nazarene. Where whenever we set the beginning of an era, it will be arbitrary. So we might as well reset back to one right now. Just think of how much easier Roman numerals will be. For a few years anyway. That's a reason enough to do it, don't you think? Thank you. And now I think, of course, it's time for a couple of cat poems. Yes! <laughs> what a segue. Oh, I forget. This one's in a special place that I forgot to do. Cappuccino mm -hmm. likes to sleep back to back with me. Mm -hmm. I swear they were just good friends. Ha. Uh, ha. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> spine to spine. <clears throat> back to back, spine to spine. Mine to yours, yours to mine. Many vertebrae align. Human ridge on two feline. My heart beats, so does thine. The two of us so inclined, species twain yet combine, as beings warm we intertwine. Ape and cat fit, I opine, for Africa drew each design. Feeling small and hominid line, so in repose we now recline, and both snooze till half past nine. Oh, yeah, yeah, don't call cappuccino. Oh, cappuccino, his mother's mocha cappuccino. And then I kind of ran out of coffee names. Uh -huh. It seemed to fit. So latte. I went with the Italian. Uh -huh. uh, his brother, <coughs> latte. his brother Salvatore, yeah. the Rattler Cappuccino. Uh -huh. um, he's been missing since October, so I fear he's no longer on this planet. Ah, cat planet. He's on the cat planet. That's where he is. Thank you. Is he the one with the in his tail? Well, they both have, but both of the, my tomcats have. Yeah. It, um, Salvatore's was kind of, you know, being an orange tabby, he had kind of yeah. stripes on the end of his tail. Ah. And to me it looked like the end of a rattlesnake rattler, and so ah. one of his nicknames oh. was a rattler. And, uh, but uh, Giancarlo is a black cat with a, like a number seven tail, mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. kind of cool. He's kind of like Felix the cat who could make a question mark with his tail. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> What happened to Felix? Yeah. He comes back every once in a while. There was uh, Felix the cat was started off in like the 1920s or something, mm -hmm. and there there were animated cartoons yes. of him. And then there was a Felix the cat show back in the 90s, so yeah. he'll probably be back again. Yes. 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 lost my place because I had to get out of my... So I'll just do something else. Okay. I'll, do, I'll do some beatles here. Who knows how long I've loved you? You know I love you still. Well, I've waited a lonely lifetime. If you want me to, I will. And if I ever saw you, I didn't catch your name, but it never really mattered. I will always feel the same. Love you forever and forever. Love you with all my heart. Love you whenever we're together. Love you when we're apart. And when at last I find you, your song will fill the air. Sing it loud so I can hear you. Make it easy to be near you. 
for the things you do endear you to me. Ah, oh, you know I will. La da 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 da, la da da da, la da 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 da. Thank you. Customers inside, fog bound family outside, braving the Austin cold. Seven color TVs and a Muzak soundtrack. I want to share what little South Austin is really like. Cassie comes smiling along with blueberry muffins, complimentary. Swiftly followed with water and organic 99 cent coffee. We ask her, how could she be so happy so early in the morning? She points to her calligraphic inside wrist tattoo. Love every day. And she smiles wider. Her positive presence changes the foggy world around us. She lights this baked wood fire and she laughs. True story, that's the fire. Free palm, like it? Like, take it, there you go. We've got two more, three ones. This one's about now. I don't like the past, I like the future. So imagine us being right here. Here we go. We knit. It's really good to keep palms away before you read them. Because <laughs> I got two copies. Oh, okay. Hey, here we go. Take both of them. So here we got the fireplace, right? This, this fireplace makes Freddy's very, very warm and inviting. And the Brewsters and the staff are incredibly warm and inviting too. So much is beyond our control in the world outside. So we come inside and we knit theories by the fireside. With the cadence of folk tales, illuminated by a warmth, belief as tangible as tea. Consolidate, compound, exponential gazelles, let fences appear. By gathering, we chase shadows further. We camp outside our villages. If we disturb them, they'll wake us up at night with imagined scenarios. If we affirm each other, somehow sleeping crocodiles. Stampedes of conspiracies loom darkness closer. Kissing dragons does not cool their fires. I've got another copy. <laughs> you've got it, you've got it, that's good. So this, that, oh yeah, this is about last night. And these three people are in this poem. It's only a short poem. It's amazing in the house, but in such a small place. It's a free poem if you want. It's called Arctic Austin. Because last night it was so cold, we froze. Poetry froze. Cool poetry, but it was frozen. Freeze we! With heaters, scarves, coats and hats. One by one, poets advance to the open mic. Then dandruff away to warmer climes. Host Louise, urbane, bright and cat positive, brings each of us to the stage right up to the lip of the cup of the night. Then just as we are dissembling, a smiling moustache asks if he might take a group photograph. It seems their birthday group has been watching us mime through the glass windows. They wondered what weirdness would it try smoke to freeze together. So we try to explain peace wave and wassail and proclamations of poetry as they gathered on stage for their promised pics. Each was given a, a gift of fresh verse. Birthday boy got two books of poetry. Each smiled in confused radiance. This was after all the point and purpose of public poetry. 
And now they're going to have to explain what they did in that group portrait on our open stage. <laughs> hey, free power. Ah, uh, yep, 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 here we go. She's coming, she's coming. This is very good. Be delivered. Hey, delivered, it's coming in. And this one's for this guy, Scott, a wonderful, wonderful poet, really trusted guy. So we just have a little tennis with poetry, you know, we send poems out on the... Have you, anyone heard of the internet? Anyone, anyone heard of the... Oh, oh, me, me. Yeah. Okay. I don't think there's an internet, I think there's a safety net, but I haven't found it yet. <laughs> it's called Throwing Arrows at the Truth. You started this by saying love is all. I counted with and a check account so fat it will not bounce. You said thin bit Buddha, non-materialist. I replied fat Buddha, everybody is material. Aha, you cried, space, time, distance, relationships. I agree, but so no need to believe anything. Jesus is a Buddhist, butterflies are free. Butterflies die after three days, they kill Jesus and Kennedy. You said then, no matter what you want to give. Who cares about beliefs, borders, barriers? Best to just smile and disappear, leaving a Cheshire cat dangling like a preposition in the air. Dangling prepositions, free palm, who wants it? I do. Oh, 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 yeah, okay. Well done. Thank you, Scott. Yes. Whoa. Thank you, Tom. Oh, yeah. Here, I'm just going to move the microphone. Scott, can this get right it just keeps right on going. Yeah, Scott. <laughs> It's got battery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. When, you're, it's it's got well, when, you, when you're making everything up yeah. uh, and you find a groove, yeah. that's a, you don't want to get out of the groove. Yeah, you don't want to get out of the groove. You want to hang there as long as you can. The funny part is when it, when it, when it takes you some place and you're like, you begin, uh, begin to not expect what you're expecting. You never anymore, expect and then you go back to the position. You have no idea what's going to happen. <laughs>
you very much. I'm not going to the meet this time, Thank you all very much for listening. It's our pleasure. If I get to come up again, who knows where I'll just Let me create the magic inside you of images that float within the blessed mind. Let me make the transformation of my poetic pictures into your soul to fly the skies in static charges, to storm into you in the power of words done so right. Let these words bounce around within you on breezes of your own thoughts to create that lightning to envision so much more. Let's create the puddles to reflect from your own image. I looked into a puddle, and my reflection winked back at me. So serious a face first appeared, as the wind blew a smile across it. Somehow the years did not show up, how things seemed to disappear. Was this the fountain of youth? As I watched, we became frozen in thought. And the wind blew away the remains and waited for spring to revive the image of one looking for another reflection. Shakespearean seduction. Shakespearean drama does embroil words, scorn inside lovers' poems. Among twisted sagas and intertwining desire, where lust sets verse on fire, hypnotic sense in reflections and sense by sonic cadences, bearing aroused words in rhythmic poetic patterns that resonates in histrionic, histrionic persona personification, poetry's aura of forevermore, set adrift in literature, PowerPoint, stage presence. Essential vibrations of meter and rhyme, singing in loft woven wee verses, in, sta in stanzas that beguile love mystery, in feminine love me, love me not, that meanders the dead spring pleasure of to and fro metrical movements. Oh, the woe in a woman's moans, that weathers a man's groaning transgression within that alabaster white ivory soft breast of Shakespearean seduction, satirical tragedy of vices and fallings in masculine and feminine fantasy that bemoans the groans in bewitching liaisons of puritanical partaking. That from the beginning roots of the poetic English language, Shakespeareans did stimulate the strength of romantic rhyme among enticing romantic theatrics that verse that has endured the wrath of time in a swath-bearing poetic rhyme where love has formed literature's epic climaxes upon the next movement of sensual sway. To be or not to be a poet, that is the question. Where all the worlds of poetic stage that you are a lover of poetry to borrow Cupid's wings, what is in a name if Thou hast not loved Shakespearean verse. Who taught thee how to make me love thee more? It, to love the mastery of literature verse in Shakespearean seduction. Thank you. This is Francis coming in right now. <laughs> I 
Oh, thank you, Louise. Uh, yeah. Give her a round of applause. Oh, whoops. Thank you, Megan. We like each other so much, we go to open mics together, and Friday we'll be in, in Peace Park. But on Sunday, we're doing a thing called Wasail. Wasail is when the pagans and the Christians used to dance together in the village hall. And for 11 years, um, at the street at Mananda School and then at the Spider House, we, um, we do this thing with the mummers and puppers and da jugglers and dancers and magicians and poets. And to celebrate the fact that we're all on this one dancing planet together. Our inner calendar's seasonal, even when quite regional. We feel sunlight on our skin, deposit daylight savings. We spring forward, fall backward, rejoice with full moons, dream through dark nights, awaken into light, and make festivals when we can each night. Call it what you will, Yule, Solstice, Saturnalia, Black Friday, Walmart hysteria, God's demand, seasonal propitiation. We sacrifice our tithes to them. Sacrificial lambs become Thanksgiving turkeys, Christmas chicken, ancient recipes and menus to get our gods and goddesses to listen. There will always be a reason for inner celebration. Social venues like this one allow us to express joy at birth, sorrow at death, sun and moon and stars which witness our gatherings and bless us with celestial mirror wings. Divinely Hanukkah festival of lights, a necessary homeopathy at night. Soon was sail, solstice, Saturnalia, Ayid, dancing between sacred days and nights on textured multiple colors. We glow into ourselves, you know. Meditate in caves, dream deeper. Light is a stranger in shades and shapes. We fall in, leaves fall out, fall down. Autumn garden, share green second thoughts, compost and mulch, return earth to birth, seed to sap, plant trust and watch as shoots grow up. Between, we are between worlds. Darkness claims us earlier. Awaken in night, return post light. Soon we'll be reminded of winter departures. Once upon a dancer, with a spin and a leap and a hay nummy nummy. She was asked to speak. Yo, rap art, uh, hip hoppity hop. And she said as she spun, hey, this is fun. Silk threads, wormholes, unthread, unspun, until unctuous uncles cried, un. This backwards village where Deja met Boo and found they were related, where gossip glued all conversation fences together, where small married smaller to make smallest, where intelligence fell to the bottom of the gene pool, where emotions recycle, divorce and remarry, where compound marriages magnetically align, where lost souls met at Austin bus stops and exchange wheelchairs, where parking meters gauge attitudes and fire selected victims, where consciousness could be imputed to fairy dervishes, always rushing to urgent appointments with pinheads. Here, I hear another tree falling into space. When the stone was asked to be a frog, Instead of a princess, she stopped singing. Ever since then we can't hear her, unless the creak of cracking rocks on prison farms, or the fall of rocks in avalanche, or the crash of volcanic rocks, as well as pebbles skimming water surface. Sink, stern, think, stone. You will never be a ballerina. You have seen a stable, rock solid, banks bet on you. They stack gold bullion as security. You are gold coins of silver, aluminum thin as copper sheet, shines with anorexia. Rock spec, we are black traveling space. Time catches us up tonight. Pompeii, Herculean, open mics, rock on, rock on rocks, rock on, roll on, roll away the stone. <laughs>
right, thank you, Louise. Uh, Tom, did you want to come up and do one last one? Sure, sure, one last one. Okay, okay one quick one, and then we are switching over to music. This is a story about a cat. I have a cat, or rather my neighbor has a cat called Sally. Sally is a white Persian, likes to climb over the fence, especially when the moon is full. Climb on our fence, climb on the roof, and sing a cat song. Meow. Meow. All together. Meow. Meow. Which translated into Texan goes like this. Give me them. Give me them now, Tom. I'm stuck on the roof and I can't get down. Give me them now. I'll make you like hell. So I decide to be Prince Goliath. I shall rescue Rapunzel from her tower. I take the small, rickety yellow ladder against the side of the house under full moon. And it was raining in my backyard the other day. In my backyard, there's a bucket. In the bucket, I saw something. What did I see? Was it rain? No, it was more than that. There was the moon in my bucket. The moon came down. Cats on the roof. I forget all about the cat. Cats can wait. They make us wait enough, don't they? I think basho, edu, zen, haiku. I flip back like a Japanese acrobat. I'm a spiritual samurai warrior reincarnated from the 13th century. And it occurs to me how much poetry there may be in one cat's eye. Good night. <laughs> How is a cat in the desert like Christmas? How? It's got Sandy Claws! Oh! 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 That was a quick one. Thank you. Hi, hi. Oh boy. Thank you so much to all the poets, <laughs> storytellers, yeah. singers, songwriters, Woo. playwriters, musical writers, yeah, and just Good darn people, that's what I mean. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for coming out. Every Wednesday, the poetry is from 4 to 6. We're in overdrive now, so we're going to go ahead and start with the music.